So now we will start our discussion on the various types of technologies that are uh, commonly used to harness this solar energy flux. Remember, this solar energy is coming in terms of electromagnetic radiation waves, light energy and infrared radiation and ultraviolet radiation. Okay. There are many ways to convert this light energy of the sun into useful work for our case. One simple method is to convert this light energy entirely into heat and then use this heat either directly or for power generation through a thermal power plant. So this kind of a technology which converts the light energy of sun into heat energy and then uses this heat energy for thermal applications or converts it further into electricity is called solar thermal energy systems. So this is the first type of technology that we will discuss. After that we will discuss the solar photovoltaic systems which uses semiconductor diodes to convert light energy directly into electrical potential energy. So we will discuss that in the second part of our classes. Now if you the solar thermal energy systems while not as well known as solar photovoltaics is a key aspect of renewable energy technology because it is one of the few ways by which renewable energy can generate thermal energy. Okay. We have seen that the penetration of renewable sources in electricity is quite large whereas in thermal applications, heat energy and transportation applications, their penetration is still quite small and the reason is renewable energy technologies have been primarily easy to convert into electricity than to transportation based systems or thermal heat generation based systems. But solar thermal energy is one of the commonly used well established technology that can convert a renewable energy re energy resource into thermal energy. Okay. And this is 2018 values and this is the comparison between the heat that is being uh, 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 consumed worldwide that is sourced from solar thermal energy systems versus electrical energy systems that are based from renewable sources. So this is solar thermal heat, total capacity in gigawatt thermals and the energy supply, actual energy supply in gigawatt thermals is this one. Okay. So you see the total capacity in gigawatt thermal is around 480 and the actual energy supply in terawatt hours is 396. Okay. So this is uh, uh, capacity in terms of power and this is energy supply in terms of energy, terawatt hour, remember that. For wind power, the total capacity is 591 gigawatt electric and the energy supply is 1470 terawatt hours. The energy supply is much higher uh, because the requirement of electricity is much more than thermal, uh, thermal requirement. Okay. For photovoltaics, the total capacity operation was 502 gigawatt thermal and the total energy supplied was 640 terawatt hours. Okay. Solar thermal power is a small amount. Total capacity in operation is around 1 or 2 gigawatt thermals and the total electricity generated is maybe 11. 11. So this is 5, this is 11 terawatt hours. Okay. But if you compare the solar thermal heat with photovoltaic electricity, Yes, it is smaller, but still a considerable amount of solar energy is actually being tapped to generate heat for domestic and industrial applications. So it is a major player in renewable energy systems. So just a basic idea of what are the features of solar thermal systems. It uses technology to convert solar radiation to heat. It is used for heating water cooking food or generating process heat or steam for industrial applications. Many industries require heat and this can be a good source of heat under many conditions. Solar thermal power generation is a technology that converts solar energy to heat and this heat is used to generate electricity in thermal power plant. So this is the solar thermal power systems. So this converts solar energy to heat and this heat is used to generate electricity in a thermal power plant. 
and as we discussed it's one of the few technologies that can generate renewable thermal energy which is a source of energy that is widely used but where renewable penetration is still quite low and we have to improve renewable penetration there for us to meet our climate change targets one of the most common types of solar thermal systems is solar hot water systems widely used in domestic domestic and commercial enterprises okay and solar hot water systems have steadily increased in their uh, capacity so around 200, uh, 2010 it's 242 gigawatt thermal of capacity was installed today in 2020 it's 501 so the capacity has doubled though if you look in the recent years the capacity has somewhat stalled so we need a significant push to improve the capacity of solar thermal uh, to continue this growing trend okay there is a difference between glazed collectors and unglazed collectors we will not discuss it right now we will just discuss a little bit later uh, solar hot water systems are widely used in many countries like greece turkey italy australia japan china okay and it is something that we could use in india as well though it is not very well established here so there is a need for a big push in solar thermal hot water systems in Indian domestic and commercial enterprises. Okay. There are two basic designs of solar thermal collect, uh, hot water systems. One uses and the design difference is basically how they are collecting the solar energy. Remember for uh, basically the, the collector design and the efficiency of collection is the main thing in a solar thermal system. So there are two basic designs, a flat plate solar collector and an evacuated tube solar collector. Okay. We will discuss these two designs one after the other. So this is a solar water heater, flat plate collectors. So this is a very common and widely used type of collector. Basically what you have is a rectangular box all right in that rectangular box the bottom of the box ha has a black heat ex uh, black material that is good at absorbing solar energy and converting it into heat and this is called the collector box okay and there you have the black absorber plate this black absorber plate this one is made of a certain material which is a very good absorber of solar energy solar light and converts it into heat okay below this black absorber plate is an array of tubes through which your fluid that is going to be heated passes through so what happens sunlight falls on this absorber plate the absorber plate usually made of a black coated material heats up by absorbing the sunlight and the tubes are in contact with this absorber plate and flows below this plate. Uh, uh, tubes are uh, uh, installed below this plate and the fluid flows through these tubes. And as the fluid flow, it absorbs heat from this absorber plate and hot fluid comes out on the other end. Okay. Above this absorber plate is an empty space and above which there is a transparent glass cover. Now the idea of a glazed versus unglazed is whether this glass cover is present or is absent. Okay. Usually for most systems the glass cover is present. Okay. There are some very simple modules used in cold countries used for heating swimming pools etc. where the glass cover is actually absent. But otherwise for most solar thermal systems use glazed systems where you have a glass cover at the top it is called a glaze so solar radiation flows through this glass cover hits the absorber plate the absorber plate heats up the fluid tubes are below this absorber plate they absorb heat while flowing through and absorbing heat through conduction from the absorber plates at the bottom is an insulation system which prevents heat from leaking out to the ground below ground or the roof below okay 
So this is the cold fluid. This is the hot fluid. The cold. This is connected to your domestic heater or uh, commercial heating heating system. So you. This is the hot water tank. The hot fluid flows through a heat exchanger within this hot water tank, and the actual water is in this hot water tank. So the hot fluid then releases heat to the water that is stored in this tank and that is how the water heats up and at the bottom of this heat exchanger the hot the fluid heat exchanging fluid as it releases heat it cools down and the cold fluid is again uh, pumped to the top of the roof and back to your flat plate collector. So this is the basic system okay in very simple devices. The water is directly flowing through the tube, uh, uh, is pumped through the flat plate collector, and there is no heat exchanger. So basically, this uh, this uh, hot water tank, top of the tank, hot water goes in, goes uh, uh, hot water enters uh, uh, directly at the top, and cold water goes directly to the flat plate collector from the bottom. There is no separation between the heat exchanger and the hot water systems. Okay. Now, this is not recommended, especially in places where the winter is quite cold. And the reason is water could freeze and produce uh, and create ice within these tubes that can stop the flow. So, usually what is done, especially in cold climates, that instead of water, we flow an uh, antifreeze fluid, which does not freeze in the sub-zero conditions. And this antifreeze fluid is flowing through these tubes and releasing heat to the hot water in the tank. And there is no connection between the hot water and the antifreeze fluid apart from heat exchange. So that's the basic idea. This is an actual photo of, of such a system installed in a roof. You can see the tube banks here. You can see the glass glazing here. This is the outlet, this is the cold water inlet, this is the array of tubes, this is the absorber, black absorber plate into which this array of tubes is embedded. Below is the insulation layer so that the heat cannot escape from the absorber plate to the bottom and has to go through the water tube and this is the outer casing. Okay. There are several different designs that progressively improve uh, the heat transfer characteristics of this kind of a plate. So first is the array of tubes, absorber plate, glass cover. Okay. Now, uh, what what is the use of this glass cover? Is is this because we have an absorber plate here? The air inside this region heats up. If a glass cover is absent, there will be convection currents which will transmit heat to the upper atmosphere, atmosphere above it. So, these convection currents will quickly transmit heat from the absorber plate to the outside and so the absorber plate will cool. Okay. And so, part of the heat will be lost to the atmosphere rather than going into the fluid. That is why you put a glass cover to stop this convection currents from forming and the heat escaping to the atmosphere. So, because the convection rolls are absent, there is only radiation and conduction through air into your glass cover and this glass cover also absorbs the radiation that is coming out of your absorber plate. So one of the good things about glass and what is why we use them in greenhouses is that glass is transparent to visible light but is opaque to infrared radiation. So, so it will allow the sunlight to enter but the infrared radiation that is being emitted by the hot absorber plate will be trapped by the glass cover and will be reflected back. So, this region will be heated further and we will get kind of a hot house inside which will keep the tubes and the absorber plate quite hot. Of course, the glass cover eventually heats up and begins to transmit heat by radiation outside itself. So, still the temperature inside will be much larger if the glass cover is present, then is absent. Another design improvement is instead of tubes, you have a continuous rectangular uh, 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 duct through which the water is flowing. So instead of uh, separate tubes, you have a 
flooded plate. So the plate is at the top and the entire fluid is flowing continuously through the bottom in this rectangular duct section. Okay. So this improves the contact and improves heat transfer. So that is another improvement in design. Another design improvement is a selective surface. So here the absorber plate is very good at absorbing short wave that is visible light radiation but it's it does not emit infrared radiation in the long wave okay so instead of a uh, ab so usual black absorber plate will absorb short wave and emit long wave radiation and that is a loss this kind of a selective surface will absorb short wave radiation but will not emit long wave radiation so you are removing heat loss due to radiation now it's only conduction so that also improves the uh, uh, heat that is getting trapped and increases the temperature form. So I will stop here today. Uh, we will discuss further in the next class where we will look at the evacuated tube collector and how it differs from this kind of a flat plate collector. Thank you for listening and have a great day.